Hey everyone. Well, welcome to our last unit before we start studying for the AP exam. Uh, and the first topic here, when you uh, look at the assignment calendar, yeah, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. All of those are about volumes. And there's lots of different volumes that we can consider. Um, if you've been in our classroom before, or if you've walked down the hall and looked in the display case, you'll see models of those things that I'm talking about here. Um, those are models to represent these different volume situations. Um, and so we've got, uh, we've got a bunch of different methods. Um, Mm -hmm. And since I don't have the objects here in front of me uh, to hold up for you as I say each of the types, I think I'm not going to worry about, uh, about showing you all the types right now. And we're just going to look at um, one type today. Assignment 35, we're going to have volumes that are footprints. And what do I mean by footprints? Well. Let's imagine you got this function, y equals square root of x. And we're going from 0 to 4. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's lots of things we could do with this footprint. Um, but what I want to do with this footprint is actually have it be the footprint for something I want to build. And the first thing I want to build on this footprint is a bunch of squares. Mm -hmm. Square. That's the side of the square. And this is the square popping off the plane. And so I get a square. Or uh, this square. Mm, like this. Or I can make a square over here. Squares are getting bigger because the side length is getting bigger. Now, instead of trying to draw more and more of these squares, what I'd like you to try and do is say, okay, from here to here, I'm going to have an infinite number of these squares. How can I um, use calculus to add up all these squares' volumes so that I could get the volume of this whole shape? Um, you know, I know that this is sort of going to this place where we have this really big square, and we've got this wee volume sort of thing in here, mm -hmm. like that. Get that out of there. Ask Jordan; he'll show you a very nice video for this, and he'll say, "Oh, that's what Kukla was trying to do." No, well, this is what Kukla is trying to do. He's trying to, and by the way, we can always think about volumes as integrating area. I mean, think about it. This is like feet squared times feet, and I get feet to the third. This dA is the thickness of each of these squares. But remember, with the integral, that's saying that our change in A is heading towards zero, or the number of squares you're going to use is heading towards infinity. So, um, yeah, integrate area. Can I say that a few more times? Integrate area. You're going to need that reminder. Uh, you may even need it on the AP exam. So integrate area to find volume. Okay, so what's my area formula? Well, I'm talking about the area of a square. And we know that the formula for area of the square is side length squared. Area equals side squared. Now, what's my side here? Well, this distance is the side length that I'm using. And this distance is a changing quantity, right? In fact, at this ordered pair over here called xy, this distance is the y value. So, side is y. I can write y squared. Okay, but, you know, I really want to have with respect to x. That's really, you know, I just like here. Oh, well, look, y is square root of x. So, y squared, well, you know, y 
the square root of x if I square both sides. And here y squared equals x. Oh, so side squared is just x? Yeah, sorry. Um, so I'm integrating x dx from 0 to 4. And that's it. I mean, really, that's it. In these problems, it is not going to be the integral that causes the huge amount of stress. Well, at least not in this first couple of days. Um, that's a really straightforward integral. Yeah. So remember, we integrated area. And area was side squared. And the side length is that y value. But we want to work this within, I guess we could do it. I really want to do it with a dy. Thanks anyway. Uh, so yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So we get x squared over 2, 0 to 4, which is 8 minus 0, or 8. The volume of this is 8 cubic units. Uh, you pick the units uh, unless you're told otherwise. All right, so um, yeah, that's what I did here. Um, I kind of want you to try this one. Um, what if instead of y equals square root of x, we had y equals x squared? Uh, and we were looking on 0 to 4, okay? Um, and which region do I want? Well, I want that region there. This is the area that I'm talking about. This is my footprint from 0 to 4. And on, these, uh, on this footprint, I want to build squares, okay? So find me the volume of the shape where you're putting a bunch of squares, like an infinite number, a bunch, here, um, and tell me what the volume of that solid would be. Okay? Come back when you're done. Hey, so were you integrating x squared dx from 0 to 4? Well, I don't know if it's that, because it's supposed to be area. And area is, um, for a square, side squared, which is this y value. And we know that y equals x squared. Um, no, there's a mistake there. Mm -mm -mm. Side squared is y squared. There we go. And that's x to the fourth. So I need to integrate from 0 to 4 x to the fourth dx. Mm -hmm. Just thinking about it again. So this distance is y. That's a side. Those are the same. And y equals x squared. So if I have y squared, that's y times y, or x squared times x squared. Yep, I like that. So we get x to the fifth over 5, 0, 2, 4. Okay, um, 4 to the fifth. 256 times 4, isn't that 1028? 256 times 4. Yep, 1024. So close, but wrong. 1024 over 5. Okay, that's it. I just have to integrate area. All right? All right. Well, I still want to go back to our friendly square root of x, 0 to 4. But how about this time? Instead of building squares, I build I don't know, rectangles. Rectangles. So I know the area of a rectangle is based on height. Let's say that h equals by the height equals three times the base. Okay, here's our base. Here's our height. We know we're integrating area to x, and that's um, uh, that's base times height. Okay, base in our problem is a y value. So that's the integral of y times, and the height is three times the base, so three y. Yeah, no, I'm going to change it to x's um, because my slices are going this way. If my slices were 
uh, oh yeah, perpendicular to the x-axis. If my slices were parallel to the x-axis, I would do dy. I'll say more about that in a minute. Let's just finish this one. This is dx. So we've got 3y squared dx. Now, we know that y is um, equal to square root of x. So y squared would be x. Mm. 3 integral x dx from 0 to 4. Again, the integrating is not the hard part here. 3x squared over 2 from 0 to 4. And you get 48 divided by 2, or 24. There. Okay. Now, about the difference between dx and dy volumes. Uh, I think it's a great thing for us to talk about. Um, and in footprints, you know, when we start, we're always just doing the most basic case. Um, but maybe it's it's worth us talking about. Um, maybe it's worth us talking about dx versus dy. So, if I make my squares perpendicular to the x-axis, then you know my shape looks something like that. Okay, and that's the one we did first, and it produces this really interesting sort of thing. Okay, that's dx, right? The width of those subintervals is a change in x. So, perpendicular to the x-axis is dx. Okay, for footprints. Now, what about parallel to the x-axis. Well, that means this. That means I'm adding up these shapes. These are my squares. Hmm. And that's a different shape. Yes, I can do it. Kind of have to be a little careful, though. And I don't know that day one is really the time to to get to that place here. But I can tell that some of you are like this, so let's just go for it. All right, now there's a point here called x, y. I know, it's just an input and an output. And this length here is the side length of my square. So if I'm integrating area, I need the side length. This is the side length. This is 4. This distance is x. So what's that distance? Because that distance is the side length. Well, this distance is 4, this distance is x, and this is our side length. So I'm going to say that 4 minus x is our side length. And since we need side squared, I better square both sides of that equation. Okay, so this is really going to be the integral of uh, integral of four four minus x squared. Oh, but it's dy. Hmm. That sounds unpleasant. Well, remember that um, there's this ordered pair here called x comma y, and the x comma y. And what we know is that this is the curve y equals square root of x. So x equals y squared. Okay. So if I take this and integrate it, well, dy. 16 minus 8x plus x squared dy. See these x's? They get replaced with y squared because this is a dy integral. So negative 8x is going to be negative 8y squared. And x squared means I square both sides and I get y to the fourth. And I'm not integrating from here to here. I'm integrating from here to here. 
So this is x equals 4, square root of 4 is 2. Okay, so I'm integrating from 0 to 2. Okay, so that's going to be 16y minus 8 thirds y to the third plus y to the fifth over 5, okay, 0 to 2. So that's going to give me 32 minus 64 over 3 plus 32 over 5. Um, I kind of want to stop there. But, you know, you could make a common denominator and combine like terms. Okay, so, um, yeah, dx, dy. Ooh, and um, Jen, it will tell you. It will tell you whether the slices, whether the cross sections are parallel to the x-axis or um, parallel to the y-axis or perpendicular to the x-axis, okay? The standard uh, assumption is that we're going to be uh, doing dx integrals unless they tell us otherwise, okay? So, but be on the watch for that. So, we've done rectangles. Uh, well, I did a rectangle. You didn't do a rectangle. Maybe you should do a rectangle. Here's your region, of course. You're working on this region. And that's a 4, and this is y equals x squared. And um, will you please make that, um, find the volume of the rectangle where the height is uh, 4 times the base. Okay? Give it a try, um, and uh, come back when you're done. Hey, welcome back. So, again, what are we integrating? We're integrating area. We're integrating area. Yeah. And my slices are going this way because they didn't tell me otherwise. And in fact, I want to say I think the rest of this video is all going to be dx. Okay? Okay. So um, I'm integrating area, which is uh, the integral of base times the height is 4 times the base, x. And we're integrating from 0 to 4. Now, tell me about that base, because I got 4b squared dx here, and I'd like to get rid of that b squared and replace it with some x stuff. Well, this is that base, and I know that's my y value, if at this point there's an ordered pair called x, y. So, I know that b equals y, and I know that y equals x squared. So, b squared... Well, that's going to be y squared, or x to the fourth. So our integral then goes from 0 to 4 of x to the fourth dx. Well, that's not hard, Mr. Winkler. No, it's not hard. See, you can do this. Oops, that's a 4. So 4 to the fifth, 10, 20, 4 over 5. All right. Good. But, oh, 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 didn't... We pull a 4 out. Mm -hmm. Times 4. Uh, 40, 96. Okay. Units cute. If they give us units, you have to use them. Usually they don't. Just to remind myself that I'm doing a volume, I put units cute there. So we've looked at, uh, at squares and rectangles. Let's take a look at circles. Back to my square root of x, out to 4. Here's my footprint. And how about we make a circle? This is the radius. And they'll say something like, and the radius is perpendicular to the x-axis. Okay, so if that's my radius, then my circle is something like that. And it's got a thickness that's approaching zero. Uh, and I notice that that thickness is measured here along the x-axis. So this is a dx integral. And again, what am I doing? I'm doing area. I'm adding up areas of circles from here to here. And so this thing's going to look like a bullet shape. Okay, 
All right, so what's the formula for area of this shape? Well, that's um, pi r squared. And the radius? Well, that radius is actually the y value at that point. Okay, so I could write pi y squared, except this is going to be a dx integral. So I've got to get rid of the y's and put some x's in place. Well, remember that y equals square root of x. And so y squared, there we go, y squared is x. So my integral is just going to be pi x dx from 0 to 4. So x squared over 2 from 0 to 4, and I get 8 pi. Nice. Hmm. Circles. Hey, but you know what else? Circles can also, instead of just having this circle, where this is the radius, we could have where this is actually the diameter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And again, I'm talking about a dx thickness. The dx thickness here, I'm measuring that thickness here on the x-axis. All right, well, what do I know? I know that I'm integrating the area. I know that that area is pi r squared. I know I've got dx slices going on here. Um, I also know that r is the y value known as square root of x. Um, no, I don't. No, that's not true. That's diameter is the y value, which is square root of x. But I need radius. Remember that diameter is 2 radius. Okay, so... What do I need? Well, I need r squared. So let's divide by 2 and say that r is square root of x over 2. Oh, but I need r squared. So if we square both sides, we get r squared is x over 4. So my integral then becomes pi times x over 4 dx. And I can plug the constant, pull the constant out, pi over 4, integral x dx. Well, that's going to give me pi over 4, x squared over 2, and we're integrating from 0 to 4. Okay, so 4 squared 16, 16 divided by 4 is 4, divided by 2 is 2, and I get 2 pi. Hmm. 2 pi units cubed. That's a different answer, isn't it? This has a lot less air, a volume than this does. These are big. These are just wee in between the top and bottom. Okay? So, two different types of circles to think about. Um, and yes, I think we'll save for later, because we do have six days on this, uh, this sort of situation here, where my circles um, have no, that doesn't work. Uh, I was going to say where well, my circles have this as a radius, but no, um, that's... Oh yeah, I could do this as a radius. If this is a radius, then that's my circle. Yeah, we'll leave on that, don't worry. Okay, next. Um, semicircles. Semicircles are very common, and I wonder if you can find the volume when I just make a bunch of semicircles here. Yeah, infinite number of semicircles. So why do you that want to try? Come back when you're done. Let's compare answers. Okay, so remember, we're integrating area. And this is not a full circle. This is half a circle. So we're integrating pi r squared over 2. dx, because we're slicing this way. Okay. Um, you know, 
could slice this way. And that could be our semicircle. Oh, but I don't think we want to talk about that right now. I mean, maybe you could do but I don't. So we're not going to. Now, what do we know about the radius here? Well, this is the diameter that I have drawn it. So we know that uh, diameter is the y value, and diameter is 2 times the radius. So radius is square root of x over 2. Well, we need radius squared, so we square both sides. We're going to get that r squared is x over 4. So now this integral is y over 2 times x over 4 dx. Now I can pull this constant out, and I'm just integrating x dx from 0 to 4. Okay. So where does that take us? Well, that's going to be pi over 8 x squared over 2 from 0 to 4. You know, plugging 0 in, not an issue here. 4 squared is 16, 16 divided by 8 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and we end up with pi units cubed. Semicircles. Oh yeah, didn't we get 2 pi the first time we did this problem with whole circles? No wonder I'm getting pi when I do only a semicircle. Okay, now, how about, how about, mm, we want triangles. There's lots of different types of triangles here. This type of triangle is an isosceles right triangle. Isosceles right triangle. And that's our dear old friend 45, 45, 90. That's an isosceles right triangle. And I want to put these in so that, again, they're perpendicular to the x-axis. So this is that. And then this is going to come up off the plane, and there we go. There's our isosceles right triangle. And I know that the formula for this triangle is 1 half base times height. And I know here is an ordered pair called x, y, where this distance is x, and this distance is y. So the leg, or base, of my isosceles right triangle is y. But since this is isosceles, I know that these are the same. So my height is also y. So the area formula that I'm going to integrate, I'm going to integrate area from 0 to 4, now that's going to end up being the integral from 0 to 4 of my y squared over 2. But wait a moment. I don't want y's in here. This is a dx integral. You know, y is square root of x, and y squared would be x. So this becomes 0 to 4, x over 2, dx. And if that 2 is troubling, you remember, you could just pull that out as a constant. And so we end up with 1 half times x squared over 2. Huh, I could have just done that. Um, mm, Instead of y squared, yeah, that's good. Okay, so there's my antiderivative, uh, and we're going from 0 to 4. 16 over 4 is 4. All right, nice. Ah, oh, you're going to love this one. And that's used in the way that we say hate, hate, hate. Um, so this time, I want equilateral. Triangles. Mm -hmm. yeah, I sure do. So that is one of the sides of my right triangle. And there we go. It's not a right triangle, sorry. It's a 60, 60, 60 equilateral triangle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, equilateral. So, what's the formula for area of an equilateral triangle? You know, I bet it's on your formulas page. Uh, sure hope you have that. 
I've been telling you all year to make one. I mean, I know I've got one half base times height. And I know that the base... Oh, whoa. What's the height? Yikes. Well, this is the base. And the base is my y prime. So one half base. Now about that height. See, this is a side length. And I asked you back in chapter one, and I think we saw it again in optimization, but I'm not entirely sure, where you needed the formula for area of an equilateral triangle as a function of its side length. So let's see if we can do that. This is h, and 60, and 30, and 90. Um, this is our side length. So if I cut that in half, this is half a side length. Now, if you know your 30, 60, 90 right triangle from geometry, you know that this is going to be S, and this is going to be root 3 over 2 S. How did I get these? Well, here's my 30, 60, 90. And this is the short leg, and this is the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always double the short leg. But the long leg over here is root 3 times this short leg. Mm -hmm. And so now I know that height is root 3 over 2 side length. And we said side length was y. Okay, so... We've got one half base times root three over two. Oops, sorry. Why? Oh, oh. This is my base. This is my y. Value. There we go. Okay, and so that's root three over four y squared. That's the formula I asked you to memorize back in August. Um, this is not the area. Well, yes, it is the area. This is the area. This is the thing I want to integrate from 0 to 4. Okay, well, um, I don't want y's here because these slices are going on this way. These are dx slices. So what do we know? We know y equals square root of x, and we want y squared. Well, that's just going to be x. So I'll put a little constant out in front. And here I'll have x. I mean, yeah, wicked hard. Wicked hard geometry. Wicked hard. Um, you did something like that in eighth grade in middle school. That was the first time you were thinking about this area. So, wow. Okay, so these are um, things that you need to be able to do. Um, yeah, equilateral triangle. Oh, that's tough love. But dude, if it shows up on the AP exam, yeah, you're going to be blown out of the water unless you know the formula for area of an equilateral triangle as a function of its side length is root 3 over 4 side squared. Okay. Hey, why don't you do this one? Why don't you do your x squared one? Uh, still going out to 4, and we'd like to build equilateral triangles there. All right, pause the video, give that one a try. Hey, welcome back. Um, so again, we're integrating area. We know the area formula here is root 3 over 4 side squared. Um, I got to get rid of S and replace with some X stuff. There's my side. You see that it's the y value for this ordered pair. Remember, this is the x value, this is the y value that gets me there. So, um, yeah, my side length is my y value. Mm, and side length is y, and we need side length squared. So, if we square, we square, we square. Now, yeah, what's that going to do? Well, that's going to give me the integral uh, x to the fourth, and don't forget um, root three 
over 4 dx from 0 to 4. Okay, I think that works. Remove siding, which is y, which is x squared, and that squared, and yeah. mm -hmm. that works great. And we're going from 0 to 4. Okay, so this is going to be 3 over 4 times x to the fifth over 5, and 0 to 4. Plugging in a 0, I get 0, I got plug in a 4. I have 10, 20, 4, root 3, over 20. Uh, it looks to me like I can do over 4 kids. Um, but that's okay. There's my volume. Cool. Okay. Footprints. Yeah? Footprints. So, um, so let's take a look at doing a deep walk. Um, how about this one? This one, I think, won't be so terrible. Um, let's use first mine, but instead of this being my footprint, I want this to be my footprint, okay? So that's my footprint, and we know that this is y equals square root of x, but in this situation, I want to go this way. And these shapes, let's say they're squares, they have a thickness. And that thickness is going to be measured across the y-axis. That is the dy integral. We're integrating area, dy, and we said squares. And what's that distance? Well, we know here is an ordered pair. This distance is x, and this distance is y. Looks like my side length is x. Okay, and we need to integrate s squared dy. Well, I know s is x. So, if I square, um, the area. Area is x squared. Area is x squared and x is y squared. Integral y. Oh, if x is y squared, then x squared is y to the fourth. There we go. Mm -hmm. So we're integrating from not 0 to 4. This distance is not 4. That distance is 4. So what's the y value here when x is 4? y equals square root of x, y equals square root of 4, or 2. So I'm integrating from 0 to 2. Okay, so that's y to the fifth over 5. 0 to 2, or 32 fifths. Nice. Okay, so that was me doing this one. How about you do this one? It's a last problem. Okay. So, I want... Um, I want circles. Mm -hmm. Circles whose radius uh, is perpendicular to the y-axis. And again, your curve is y equals x squared. And if this has been 4, 4 squared is 16. So 4, 16 is right there. Okay, so me the volume. Find me the volume when we have circles whose radius is perpendicular to the y-axis. Um, mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we're integrating area, and in our situation, pi r squared, um, at this radius, at this radius, this distance is a y value. This distance, that's x. So r equals x. And we know that y equals x squared. So if I hmm, if I want r squared, that's x squared. And we know x squared is y. So this can be replaced with y. Mm, pi integral y dy. Uh, what about the boundaries? I'm going from a y value of 0 to the highest y value, which is 16. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go pi times mm, y squared over 2 from 0 to 16. Mm, 16 squared is 256 divided by 2 is 128 pi. All right, that's what you should have gotten. Okay, everyone. Well, I look forward to seeing you in the next video um, because the next video sort of starts off where this one leaves off. Um, I want to I want to consider uh, this new thing. This, this is really for the next video. But I want to think about rotation. And there's lots of things we can rotate about. You know, we have this footprint, but we don't have to just, you know, build a drawing block. Um, we could take this and spin it on the x-axis. And that really does make a bullet shape. Mm -hmm. Find the volume of that. No worries. I'm just thinking about finding the volume of all these slices that have a dx thickness. And again, I'm adding up area. But not only could we rotate around the x-axis, we could take that same situation and we could rotate around the y-axis. And if we rotate around the y-axis, the thickness of the slice is measured here along the y-axis. Ooh, discs and washers. Next video. See you there.